All right, so today's project is making a low poly vase. Uh, it's kind of similar to this, not as cool. One, because we don't have this cool uh, curve on the edge, not yet, um, not until we get more advanced in open ASCAD. And two, this one is printed out in probably, I'm trying to remember the, the name of the PLA, the, the type of filament. Um, it's really cool filament that this printed out with. Ours is not gonna be so shiny, unfortunately. It's still pretty cool though, because low poly vase and it's gonna be useful. Um, so here's the general overview of what we're going to do. So first we're going to design a simple shape uh, using GeoGebra, and then we're gonna convert these points um, and put them into open SCAD, basically put them right there. We get to change some of their settings to make this look cooler, and then you're basically done. Um, and then on my end, what I do is I put it into Kira Lulzbot um, by uh, putting it in like this, it automatically will slice. If I go to vase mode, and then you're you're done. So let's check out what that actually looks like in terms of the layer view. Even though it looks like a, a solid, um, when I turn it into vase mode, it only does the outline. Cool. So how do we do that? Let's go through, the, through this whole process. Um, so first step is to do this. So how do we do that? So go to geogebra.org forward slash geometry, and you'll have something just blank like I do. So you go settings, show axes, settings, show grid, let's do major grid lines. Um, the size that you want, um, we want to have our zoom out until you see that the y-axis goes between negative 50 and 50. It doesn't really matter what's going on, on the x-axis. As long as your points are contained within here, then you'll have the right size because you're thinking that each of these units is a millimeter. So if I have um, the distance between 0 and 10, for example, is 10 millimeters, or this is one centimeter. So it's not very big right here. Um, and if you go within this size, then I'll make sure that I can actually print it out on time. Otherwise, it's going to take forever. So what are we going to do? The, there's a few different ways. I mean, obviously, we're going to be using a polygon. And you can do the simple polygon that I did over here. But it would be cooler if you did something else. And you can use uh, some of the tools in GeoGebra to maybe make some rotational symmetry and see if that looks cool. So um, I'm just going to show you some, some cool tricks that you could try. So I'm going to just make some random points out here. Um, if I use rotational symmetry, um, it is kind of important that I um, go start at negative 40 and then end at 40. Like I, I don't want to end back at 30. And then I'm going to connect it to zero, the origin, and then back to 40. So I have like a quadrant of shapes. And I can always click back and move. And if I don't like that shape, I can change to something else, something like that. And it doesn't matter. The cool thing using GeoGebra is if you click on the more tools, you can reflect, you can rotate. Um, rotational symmetry looks really cool with these because we're going to be uh, rotating these bases anyway. So if I rotate this shape around the this point, so if I rotate around point, click on the shape, click on the origin G, and then I'm gonna change this to 90 degrees, hit okay. Kind of same thing, I still have the tool selected, so I click on the shape, click on G, or G prime, it doesn't really matter, uh, 90 degrees, hit okay, etc., etc. I'm gonna click on shape, G, double prime, 90 degrees. So I have the cool shape that I might just use like that. Um, but the cool thing with this is if I come back to the move tool and if I move C around it moves them all around and then you can really find some some interesting shapes that you want. Um, they don't have to be locked onto these um, I'm uh, forgetting the term lattice points. Uh, they can look like whatever you'd want. So I'm just going to go with that shape. Um, notice that I have a, every single one of these has two coordinates um, and that's going <laughs> to this is going to take a while to program in but I want to do this shape with you guys. So how do we do this now that we have our shape? And you're, you're doing this along with me, so you probably like pause the video and you're, you're doing your own shape. Okay, so the next step is to open up, open that, good. And I will give you this code. Um, you're just gonna hack my code, which is, um, I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but you're gonna change my code, modify my code, and figure out how it works. So essentially all we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna enter in new points. Um, what's happening in our code, I'll go ahead and explain it really quickly. So. First, we have a polygon. This is the polygon. Um, if I get rid of this linear extrude by commenting it out, comment this out, and then um, preview this, I just have my base shape right here. So if I, um, you can see that that was the original shape right here. And then what I did to the shape was I decided to extrude it. And extrude just means kind of like stretch it out. And I stretch it out in a cool way. So if you go to the cheat sheet, it has all the stuff in it too that explains what each of these do. But it says, okay, the maximum height is going to go up to is 100. So when I actually preview this again and zoom to size, you can see in terms of the Z axis, it goes up to 100. So it's 100 um, millimeters tall or 10 centimeters. So um, what is it, like a, a third of... A foot. I 
span. I don't know metric system very well. What is 100 centimeters in inches? Um, that's whoa. That's way wait 100 millimeters. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. So roughly a third of a foot. It's uh, four inches. Um, and then twist is 60. That means that the base shape um, starts with whatever it was, right? So if I um, just isolate that polygon, um, this base shape. By the very end of its rotation at the very top, it will rotate a total of 60 degrees. And this is in degrees, not radians. Um, how many slices? This will obviously affect um, how uh, many of these polygons there are. So if I have a really low number, then it will be kind of jagged. And maybe it looks kind of cool like that. Maybe if I do 100, it'll be nice and smooth. It, it depends on what you are looking for uh, in your vase. So I'm going to leave it at 20. And then you don't have to scale yours. I just did this to play around with it. Um, and this can be a 2D vector also, or a vector with two um, parts. So I'm just saying 1.5. If by default, uh, the scale is equal to 1, which means it's not scaled. Um, it's the same size from the bottom to the top. But if I do this to like 2, then it's twice as big at the top. Or maybe if I do like 0.5, then it gets nice and thin at the top. Um, and you can do like multiple of these linear extrudes. Like you can paste um, a linear extrude here and then another one down here that has to be translated up uh, to make like really cool designs. Um, of course, we're not going to get anything to the level of the, the low poly rose vase. Um, it's a little bit more complex, but you can get something that looks pretty darn cool still. So that's its explanation. Now let's do a, a montage of me changing all these points to match the points in here. And I, my advice for you guys is to make sure that you know that you're starting at some point and then always go either clockwise or counterclockwise and don't skip a point. Um, it's pretty easy to add in a point though. Okay, here we go. So it looks like I have it done. I'm just kind of checking to make sure that it looks the same as mine. Yeah, okay, I got all the points. Um, one uh, comment that I'll make that I made a mistake on when I was doing this before I recorded was um, you don't want to comment for the very last one because there's not a following uh, point after this. I don't think it'll give you an error if I do a comma there. Oh, yeah, it's the same thing. So it doesn't matter either way. Okay, so now you have your points. Notice I also commented out the linear extrude and commented out this uh, end parenthesis so it wouldn't give me an error down there to just check my base shape. And then I, I went to zoom to size. And uh, yeah, so it looks good. And then I'm going to uncomment out those two lines with my double forward slashes and check it out when I linear extrude it. Wow, that looks pretty cool. All right, so for my base, I want my scale to be 1.5 so it gets slightly larger. And. Um, hmm. I kind of like it when it's low poly, so I, I kind of want to change it to 10. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, do I want it to twist by 60 degrees? What would happen if I did like 100 degrees? Um, twists even more. I do kind of like the twist because it kind of stretches out the triangles. I'll go with a twist of 100. I like the default size of 100 for the height. And that's really all I want to change. Okay, so I basically have my vase done. So if I zoom to size again, there it is. And I guess I can also turn off my axes so that it looks even better. So I guess that's just command two. That's the shape that I want. So you now as a student are basically done. What I need you to do is to obviously save this. So how do you save this? So I'm gonna hit command save. You probably want to save it to your desktop. I have a bunch of stuff there. Um, what do you want to save this as? Please name it um, spiral vase and then your um, first and last name. So I would put Andrew Sindel, and then hit save. So it's saved somewhere that you know, and then finally you wanna save the STL. And notice if you click STL, nothing's gonna happen because you haven't um, exported anything or you haven't uh, rendered anything. You've just been previewing the entire time. So this is the preview button. This is the actual render button. And it takes a long time if you have curves, but this was just polygon, so it's nice and fast. Okay, so I clicked it and you can't see it, um, but uh, my my console, if I unhide it, it says, yes, rendering has finished and there are only 436 facets because there weren't any curves. Nice and fast, okay. STL, and then I'll probably save it the same name, save, and then you'll post, or sorry, you'll upload both the SCAD file and the STL file that you exported, both in Google Classroom, and then I will print these out for you. Um, if you're curious on how I'm doing that, um, uh, the Lulzbot Taz 6, so I have to use uh, a custom Cura software, it's the Cura Lulzbot, um, this one is for Mac. Um, there's not too much that you really have to do. Um, what I did down here, go away, 
um, is instead of recommended, I went to custom. I also made a, a new profile just so that I could find it easier, but you could just totally modify the, the standard one if you want. So let's pretend I open it up in standard. Let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. Go back to solid view and delete you. Delete, delete. Okay, so let's open up a new file. Um, that's the, not the right one. There's my spiral base that I just made. Oh yeah, and I like the, how low poly it is. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so um, say you have a standard model. What do you do? Um, you um, go, come down here to special modes. You come down here and then you check spiralize outer contour. And I'm, I don't know what this does exactly aside from reading the description off to the side. I think that sounds cool. So I'm going to try that. Um, it automatically sliced. It only takes three hours, three and a half hours. So it's not that long, even though it's kind of a big print, right? Um, so it looks like it's not working, but if I come here to layer view, then of course it does work. Um, so you can see it is only printing outside. And if you know stuff about base mode, you'll know that it's a continuous line. It doesn't uh, shift up a layer and then print out a new layer and then shift up a layer. It's just a continuous line up and up and up and up and a continuous piece, a continuous spiral. Cool. So I'm ready to send this off with my OctoPrint. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.